Is it a mistake to imagine that medicine is gradually expanding lifespan and will continue to do so? Dennis, would you like to sum it up in three minutes for us? The first thing to say is, as the Irishman would say when you ask him where the way is to Belfast, I wouldn't start from where you are. Now, that's a serious point because, unfortunately, over the last 20 years or so, we've focused on the dots in the print of a message without paying attention to the message itself. Those dots are the genes and the genomics in which we've spent hundreds of billions as a world in understanding, documenting, and getting the information on. But the trouble is that those dots don't tell us what the message is. So the first point I would make is I wouldn't start from where we are. How do we now look at the situation going forward, though? I think we have to reorientate our way of thinking about how to deal with the more complex diseases. And I'll illustrate that very briefly with work on the heart. If I ask the question, where is a heart arrhythmia? Where is the extraordinary circulation of electricity called a fibrillation, which unfortunately kills people suddenly and in good health normally? Where is that? It's not in the genes. It's actually at the high level, even above the level of cells, let alone molecules, in the way in which the process occurs at the level of the organ as a whole. We will have, therefore, to start paying attention to the different levels of organization in biological systems and focus where the disease is. If I want to cure an arrhythmia, I'm going to have to focus at a much higher level than the individual molecules. That doesn't mean to say that they are not doing something. There are mutations in genes that will predispose people to arrhythmia, for example. But that is not the level at which to understand the arrhythmia and how you may treat it. So I think, roughly speaking, we wouldn't want to start from where we are, but we have to. <laughs> <laughs> the Irishman was right. <laughs> but um, what now we do is open to a lot of very careful thinking, because thinking about the higher levels of organization in biology is much more difficult than thinking about the level of molecules and genes. There's my brief statement. Thank you, Dennis. Yes. Um, Nessa, um, what do you think? Is it a mistake to imagine that medicine is going to gradually expand and save us all? As you can see, if you can read my T-shirt, I'm very my jumper. I'm very clearly a member of Team Science here. Yeah, <laughs> and science has made enormous impacts on human lifespan. Um, that that's incontrovertible. Sometimes it wasn't just science; it was things like soap was created before we understood about germs, and that made a huge difference too. But science has made an enormous difference. However. Um, lots of those differences have been at the level of childhood diseases. So lots of people died very, very young, which doesn't happen anymore because of vaccination. But if there's one thing that science's impact on health has taught us is that we're all going to die of something. So we all worry now about why many, so many people die from cancer. It's because they're not dying from heart attacks. You know, things like the statins have made an enormous difference. I don't believe you can expand human lifespan indefinitely because I think it makes no evolutionary sense. We already live far longer than we should in evolutionary terms. We live long beyond our reproductive capacity. So we're already stretching things. Also, it's not about how long you live, it's about how well you live. Most people would prefer to die in a good state of health at 85 than to live another 10 years in terrible, terrible health. And so when we think about longevity, we need to think about do we mean actual years or do we mean quality of life up to a certain stage? I think, though, even if we could extend to, say, a healthy lifestyle to the age of 120, 130, would it be morally responsible to do so? The massively climbing human population has nothing to do with birth rates. Birth rates have been dropping for decades. It's because people aren't dying as early. And now I have no intention as an individual volunteering to take one for the planetary team <laughs> on that, but that is what is driving population growth. And if we do start massively extending population 
age from, say, 85 to 120. And it's not going to be happening in the lower middle income countries. That's going to be because of things we do to ourselves in the highly developed economically uh, developed economically countries. Yeah, that made no sense at all. You know what I mean. Um, and we're already the ones driving destruction of the planet because our consumption is so high. So I think there are both scientific questions, and I don't think we can live forever. And there are ethical questions. And there are also economic questions. Everyone talks about we need new antibiotics. We have new antibiotics. The last two companies to develop new antibiotics went bankrupt within six months. We need new economic models to promote greater health for the global population, which will lead to longer term healthy life for everybody, not just for a few individuals in the developed north. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so we would end up with the haves and have nots becoming worse. It would be the lives and live health nots. inequalities. The most damaging people would be alive longer to do more and more damage and create greater right. problems for the have nots. Mm. Um, Guy. What do you think? Thanks. <laughs> so the title of this session is Medicine Myth, and I want to talk about three um, different but related medical myths. The first is that medicine is about preventing death or should be about preventing death. The problem is that medicine and public health generally has been very successful on this and has resulted in a large uh, extension of lifespan on average. It's more than doubled in the last 200 years, uh, but the, the, the so that's a good thing. Um, but the problem is that we've done nothing about the rate of aging. Um, and because aging increases exponentially uh, with the age that you live, we end up aging much more uh, before we die. And that's associated with many different age related diseases such as dementia and extreme aging. So you end up with a degenerative end to life. The second uh, myth that I want to explore is that aging is natural. Many people say that aging is natural um, and therefore we shouldn't do anything about it. Well, the opposite is the case. Aging is very rare in, in, the, in animals in the wild and it was very rare or extreme aging was extremely rare for humans before civilization up to a few hundred years ago. Um, so Aging is not natural. It's a product of a culture, our culture, and it's a culture that has continually targeted acute causes of death, resulting in an in a large increase in lifespan, resulting in extreme aging. The third myth that I wanted to um, explore uh, in relation to medicine is the Hippocratic Oath. So we should do no harm. The issue is that with a degenerative end to life and some people um, experiencing at the end of life a negative quality of life, wanting to die because they have degenerative diseases, um, it, it would be rational um, to have assisted dying in the specific conditions where you have degenerative uh, disease. Um, uh, but that is an issue in relation to the Hippocratic Oath, so I'd like to also discuss that. Thanks, David. Thank you, thank you. Um, since we're all, as you said, we're all going to die of something, what is it that we're going to die of? Because th th we've talked about two different things. There's, there's just the mechanical, something's going to fall off or stop working. Presumably there's a finite number of things that can just stop working. But then there's things that are nothing to do with us, outside diseases like viruses. I, is there an indefinite amount of things that we could die of? Or is, it, is, is there a list that medicine is going to get through? You um, we'll always see particularly the emergence of new zoonotic diseases coming from the animal kingdom. And that will only get worse because we're breaking down the boundaries with the animal kingdom. So unless we have ecosystem restoration, at a global level, that's going to continue happening. However, I think science will get much, much better at dealing with those. Um, the response to COVID is a scientific miracle, if such a thing exists. It's extraordinarily how fast, particularly the vaccines were developed, but we will constantly see new diseases emerging. And we, as Dennis said, we are extraordinarily complex organisms. If you fix one bit, it just creates space for another bit 
to go wrong. So I think we, we might find new interesting ways to die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think we'll ever stop it. I think we are finding new uh, interesting ways to die. Um, <laughs> your question was, where, uh, is there a fixed number of diseases or, or is it potentially infinite number one? Well, historically, we have targeted as a society whatever is the main cause of death. Um, and we've had increased lifespan and that reveals new diseases because aging is not one, it's dozens or maybe hundreds of different processes. And you go, as you go into extreme aging, um, you reveal more and more processes um, and more and more diseases. So in the last 20 or 30 years, many new diseases have been seen because people are living to longer and longer years. Um, and that's obviously a problem. The main cause of death now in the UK um, is dementia. That is the main cause and has been, uh, well, prior to the pandemic, during the pandemic, uh, COVID was the main cause of death, but it was closely followed by dementia. And dementia is now, um, again, the, the main cause of death. And obviously that is a problem. But if you remove dementia, then another thing will be, removed, will be revealed by extreme aging. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.